going carnivore in Thailand. It's a beautiful day. Hasn't rained yet. It probably will later today. Yesterday we got rain for a while and it was pretty nice. I actually stayed in the pool for about an hour while it was pouring down rain. That was sort of cool. I haven't done that since I was a kid. Anyway, let's see, going crypto. Well, last night, Noi successfully recognized that her blood sugar was low after eating some beef that she pressure cooked with some herbs to flavor the beef, but she doesn't eat the herbs. Uh, she cubes this beef and she puts some herbs in the pot, puts some water in and pressure cooks the beef and then she eats that. After she ate it, about an hour and a half later, I guess, maybe two hours later, she said, I'm starting to feel that little numb feeling that I get. So we tested her blood sugar and it was uh, 59 which is below 70. And she elected to have a 10 ounces of orange juice and a Magnum ice cream bar. We tested her blood sugar again and it was 79, which is not high, but over 70, so it's not hypoglycemia. So... She's now beginning to recognize the metabolic traits of when she she's going to low sugar. And I don't know what how we cure this. Uh, she's lived such a high carbohydrate laden diet for her whole life rice and noodles and vegetables and fruits so high in carbs and so low in protein really i mean probably when she grew up you know having chicken was probably a treat forget about steak or anything like that so trying to figure out how we compensate for this or whether over time she'll just adjust to the fact that she is now getting fat and she's getting protein and she's not eating a lot of carbohydrates. Now lately, ever since her hypoglycemic reaction and her low blood sugar, she has been eating way more sweets. And she's right now at our once a week Friday morning market that's held in the parking lot of the temple up the street in the Huiai. And it probably has a hundred plus vendors and booths that they temporarily set up and people from all over come on Friday morning and they buy their meats and vegetables and they sell clothes, shirts, pants, shorts. They sell everything there. But she's there this morning looking for, I think, avocados and possibly bananas or oranges. But I don't think she can get the bananas there. I think we discussed those would be best come from macro or go wholesale. She actually likes the bananas in the individually plastic packages at 7-Eleven. They got good bananas and that package seems to keep them fresh. Uh, but they're more expensive that way. So I don't know if you get any comments. Now, somebody mentioned about the pain in her foot, that the pain left her knee, and her knee had no pain, but her foot was swollen, 
and she had trouble walking on her foot. Well, the foot's back to normal and the pain went back to the knee. Somebody made the comment that maybe that's gout. Maybe her uric acid's out of whack. Well, we're going to go test her uric acid and have a blood test done for that, as well as a blood test done for uh, probably insulin response and a few other things, but and and her potassium level again. Although she's keeping her potassium level up by eating the avocados. She eats an avocado almost once a day. She eats an avocado. Partially because she doesn't want to get low on potassium. But she's also taking a pill potassium supplement and a pill magnesium supplement to go with it. So that she doesn't get that low potassium again. Uh, evidently, coming from a sad American Western diet to carnivore is less traumatic than going from a carb and sugar laden Eastern diet to a carnivore diet is more troublesome for her. And uh, it, it's really knocked her for a loop. She was actually uh, emotional the other day saying, yeah, she don't understand. I'm adapted so well. And, and she's... Uh, Let's face it, she's younger than me by uh, a good shot. And I'm doing just fine. So there's a couple types of, of Eastern Asian, Southeastern Asian diets in play here. If you grew up in a big city like Bangkok, you probably have a higher degree of processed foods and so forth than if you grew up in a outer village in an Isan province like Udon Thani. Like her village is 15 kilometers or more from the real city of Udon Thani. It's in the country. I mean, you're you're going down seven kilometers of narrow, beat up roads, passing uh, coconut fields and rice fields and all kinds of of agriculture. Uh, people herding cows down the middle of the street, moving them from one pasture or whatever to the next. So you're way out there in the country. I don't think those people are exposed to as many processed Western foods as somebody in Bangkok. So on this carnivore channel, I wanted to open up the conversation here. What do you think? I mean, I'm trying to figure this out and it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do to try to figure out people's metabolic functions. How well are they, are they processing uh, their body's metabolic needs? And with Noi, it's particularly troublesome because it's not just, well, is she, how fast is she losing inches and how fast is she losing weight? It's how healthy does she feel today? Is it going to be a good day? Uh, could she get sick at any minute and, and lose track? Hold on a second. The lenses on this camera looked really dirty. I hope that I just didn't film this thing that looks like crap. But 
what's your comment? Is that pain that moved from her knee to her foot and then back again? Could that be uric acid? Could that be gout? It didn't look like gout. It wasn't even that swollen. It was just hard to walk on. Well, I hear what sounds to be like Nori returning on her motor scooter, her Honda. Uh, yep, that's the gate opening. So we'll cut this off right now. That's all, folks.